In this video, we're gonna take a quick dive into creating motion graphic shapes. Hey, what's going on internet? This is Josh Noel from Sunduck Film and welcome to our channel. If you're new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button. So we've done a handful of motion graphic tutorials on you know shapes and whatnot, but there's just so much to go through. So in this video, we're gonna talk about several different motion graphic shapes and how we can implement them into any After Effects project. So if you wanna spruce up your titles, you wanna add more details to your explainer videos or add some nice graphics to your logos, you're gonna be able to do that with this tutorial. So without wasting any more time, let's jump into our tutorial and let's get started. So our first shape that we're gonna create for motion graphics is a rectangle burst, which is great. So it's very easy to do. We'll come here to the top and we don't need to grab the rectangle tool, we'll actually grab the pen tool. And we'll click on the word fill here at the top, set it to none, click okay. Click on the word stroke, set it to solid color, click okay. And if we want, we can change the color to whatever we want. I'll select this orange, click okay. And we'll come here, click a point, hold down shift on our keyboard and click another point. And it'll be a straight line like that, great. We can make this a little bit thicker if we want like a rectangle then we'll open this shape layer go to add and let's add a trim paths come here to begin our timeline open up trim paths set the start percent to 100 percent add keyframe for it we'll move forward by a little bit set the start to zero percent and then let's add a keyframe for end and then let's move forward just by a little bit in time and set the end to zero percent and then let's make all of our keyframes easy ease keyframes by hitting f9 on our keyboard and we should have something like that. And very simple. So to make this into a burst, we need to duplicate this and make it a burst. But before we do that, we need to move this anchor point where we need to be. So duplicating it is super easy. So what we'll do is grab the pan behind tool here at the top, click on shape one in the contents. And there's gonna be this anchor point right here. This is the shape anchor point. If you just click on the layer, you're gonna get the layer anchor point. You want the shape anchor point. So this is a much smaller one. And we'll just bring this one, you know, towards the bottom end of our rectangle. Make, make sure it's centered. And then we'll want to bring this kind of in the middle of our burst. So it's very easy to duplicate this and that's good enough. So what we'll do here is just click on shape one, go to edit, duplicate. And then we can come in here, go to transform and we can rotate this shape by 90 degrees. And then of course we'll grab both our shapes here, duplicate them. And then we'll rotate these two shapes to obviously make things a little bit congruent. Very nice, so now you have this nice burst rectangle. And since we designed it this way, it's very easy to make modifications so we can make it a little bit skinnier if you want to. We can hit U on keyboard to bring up the keyframes, make any keyframe adjustments here. Pretty much a lot to work with. And then to make this even better, the reason why you know we just don't wanna have one, we wanna have a bunch of these. What we'll do here is we'll duplicate this layer and we can hit P on keyboard for position and move it around our composition randomly you know and I duplicate it again all right and then I have a few in here and we'll offset these in time and now we have a few random rectangle bursts in here that just adds a little bit more value to our composition so next up I want to create a line motion graphic just to draw more attention to our title or logo what or whatever element that we want to bring more attention to and it's very easy to do this we'll grab the pen tool again and this time we'll kind of just draw out a random path you can be a little bit artistic with it you don't have to be you know, perfect. All right, cool. And I'm gonna come here and just change the color so we can see what we're doing, that's fine. And you know, it's not as far from perfect, but that's good enough for what we're trying to do here. So we'll go ahead and open this up, go to add, and we'll add the trim paths again, because we wanna animate this line. We'll open this layer up and we'll set the end to 0%. We'll add a keyframe for start. And maybe we'll have this animation be, I don't know, a second and a half. Set this up to 100% go towards the back to the beginning, but not completely at the beginning, add a keyframe for end, and we'll move forward past the last keyframe and we'll set the end to 0%. So now you just get like a much smaller line in there animating in, and we can make it a little bit thicker by going to the stroke at the top and just, you know, making it a little thicker. Then we can go in the shape one, go into the stroke one, and we'll set the line cap to a round cap. So it's kind of rounded out at the edges, it's not, you know, hard or anything. And then of course, let's make sure we make our keyframes easy, ease keyframes, that is very important. And one thing I wanna do is make sure that the end keyframe is actually connected with the last keyframe. That way, uh, it'll seem like the entire thing is animating the entire time. Bring out the start keyframe to be a little bit longer so the line will actually be a touch longer. And one thing that we can add to this is to make this stand out a little bit more is we can grab our shape layer here and go to effect, stylize, and we'll add glow. And then we'll go ahead and duplicate this effect 
and increase the radius by like to 70 or so. So now this has a little bit more attention to it. All right, with our two graphics married together, it's coming together, but we'll go ahead and add one more graphic in here just to add a little bit more you know, detail to this. So this time instead of using the pen tool, we'll use an actual shape here because there's a lot you can do with the pen tool, but obviously there's a handful of other shapes here and I wanna take a look at just using it for our last technique. So we'll come here, grab the ellipse tool here at the top. We'll continue with the stroke. We can lower the stroke count by a little bit this time. So we'll go back to 10 and we'll just hold down shift on our keyboard to draw a perfect circle. So boom, here is a cool circle. And this time, of course, we're gonna go ahead and add a trim paths. What else is new? And, uh, let's, and let's go ahead and bring the end all the way down to 0%. And we'll add a keyframe for it. And this time, instead of going to fully 100%, let's just have it open by a little bit, like, you know, 20% or so. And then let's dive back by a few frames, add a keyframe for start and move forward and set the start to uh, the same percent as the end percent. So 18% in my case. So we'll just get this. And actually, let me just solo this until we're ready to go. So we'll just have that. And let's just make the first keyframe easy ease and the last keyframe easy ease. Awesome. So now let's go ahead and duplicate the ellipse one. And we can come into ellipse two and rotate this. And we can scale this down by a little bit. And we'll duplicate this. And we'll continue to mess with the rotation, scale it down. And we'll just duplicate several different copies of this. And we'll just, you know, every time just adjust the rotation and scale. And then we have a few pieces on the board here. What we'll do is we'll rotate the overall thing, but we got to center that anchor point. So just control, double click the pan behind tool. It'll be in the center. Actually, you might need to reposition that to be directly in what should be the center. And no problem. Then just hit R on your keyboard for rotation. Add a keyframe for rotation and move forward for the entire animation. And we'll just rotate this, you know, nice and randomly and do what we do best, duplicate it, and move it around your composition. And we can make these all a little bit smaller by hitting S on keyboard and bring down the scale. Awesome. And then obviously, just offset them in time. So now we have all of our motion graphic techniques put together in one composition. So it's really up to you how you want to use these sort of techniques. And of course, we have a handful of tutorials on more motion graphics like this. So I would link those in the description. And if you're curious about this title and background animation, I pulled this out of a extension for After Effects called Create Pack, which has 3,600 elements for After Effects. And something about this works, I can go into this extension here in After Effects and find a pre-made title animation along with many other categories that I want to use. So if I want to use, say, this title animation, I can apply this and it will automatically add this title animation into our project file. And I can come in here and easily change out the title. And as you can see, it's completely responsive to the design, so that's awesome. And of course, out of it, we have all these pre-made motion graphics that we kind of just created just in different you know, formats and a little bit more detail that you can automatically apply to any compositions. And we can automatically apply these burst motion graphics to our project file. So if you want to learn more about Create Pack, I will drop a link in the description. And there's also a free trial for Create Pack, so you can get like 200 elements for absolutely free in the trial. So you can check it out before you get the full pack. And I will drop those links in the video description. So now you should have a few new techniques for creating motion graphics within After Effects. If you want to learn more about creating accent motion graphics and shapes, you can check our links in the description. We've created a handful of tutorials on these techniques so you can continue to expand your library of skills. So thank you so much for watching this video. If you found it enjoyable, please be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Sunduck Film, because we post multiple post-production tutorials like this every single week right here. You can also hit me up on my social media networks. Those links are in the video description and always be creating.